Guys, welcome to day 15 of our 28 days of Pilates challenge. We're just past the halfway mark. I hope you're feeling good. I hope you're feeling energetic. I hope you're feeling strong uh, and flexible. So well done so far. For today's 15 minute session, we're going to work in standing for the entire session. You'll just need a mat if you have it. And if you don't have a mat, that's fine, just a clear space. But you may need a chair just to hold on to for some of the balance exercises. We'll take our shoes off, as always, particularly for these ones. It makes it a little more challenging to have your shoes off. Um, and with the balance work, it's a really great way to improve your core strength and stability. So all around here in a standing position, which is really functional to our everyday lives. So if you think about every day, from the minute you get out of bed, you're on your feet, you're walking around, you're going up and down stairs. Um, you know, maybe your whole entire day is on your feet at work. So it's really great to practice some of these exercises to have improved stability around the pelvis, um, the hip, the knee and the ankle as well. Um, it's also really great if you're a runner or if you walk a lot to try some of these exercises. They will help to improve your running performance. They'll help um, decrease the likelihood of injury um, and just overall make you a better runner if you've got good balance and good stability around all those lower limb joints. When you think about walking or running, we're always landing on one foot. We're always pushing off from one foot. So we're going to be able or we want to have good strength around each of those joints that are affected. We also want to make sure that when we land on one foot or stand on one foot that our pelvis remains level and not dropped down. So let's practice that now. We're going to start obviously in standing. Let's walk our heels apart and our toes apart. And just before we begin, let's think about our foot positioning. Let's think about our center of gravity. Let's think about our pelvic position. And just get focused with some nice deep breathing. So if you want, let your arms just rest by your side. We're going to give our knees a quick wiggle so that we're not locking the knee joints out. Let's take a minute just to find our pelvic neutral position. So we want our pelvis to be level across as we look down or as we feel the two sides of the pelvis. We also want it to be neutral as we look in from the side. So let's imagine our pelvis is like a bucket. It's full of water. We're going to spill the water out the front of the bucket. And then we're going to come all the way back and spill the water out the back of the bucket again. Let's inhale through the nose as we move the pelvis forwards and downwards and exhale to come back in the opposite direction. One more inhale and exhale. And then you're going to stop halfway between those two points. So that's our goal. Whatever we're doing with our balance exercises, that's our goal. Let's maintain a level and neutral pelvis all of the time. We then have our knees and our ankles just following down that line from our hip. And just check that your toes are pointing directly in front. So if you're somebody who has one foot that turns out, that's okay. We all have these little differences in our posture. But for these exercises to get the most benefit, let's just check that they're pointing straight out in front. We also want to find our center of gravity. We found our center here. Let's find our center from the entire body as we lean slightly forward onto the balls of our feet lean back onto our heels. So it's just a little sway forward and backwards. We'll add our breath. We're inhaling as we sway forward and exhale to sway back. But you're keeping your pelvis still at a level. We're not bending at the waist here. We're simply just leaning a bit of our body weight to the front of the foot and then leaning back onto the heels. And your foot stays connected to the floor. Don't lift your foot off the floor at all. Let's go for one more in either direction. And we're going to stop halfway. So when you feel that your weight is really evenly dispersed between the front and back of your foot, stop. And we also just want to think about the angle from side to side. So sometimes we might have one ankle that rolls in for whatever reason. Again, we're all different and that's fine. So let's roll in and roll out now, inhaling to roll in. Exhaling to roll out and then let's stop again in the center. Imagine now and just even feel, close your eyes for a moment and just feel that your weight is really even between your big toe, your little toe and your heel on each foot. So let's try and maintain that throughout the balance exercises. Let's keep our knees soft, pelvis level, relax the arms by our side. Let's take a nice deep breath in then. And let it out. 
deep breath into the nose. And out through the mouth. We'll place our hands onto our pelvis, making sure the pelvis stays in alignment. And as we exhale, then we're going to lift our left heel off the ground, keep the right foot down and level, and lower it back down. Let's swap to the other side. Exhale, lift the right heel, and inhale to lower. Exhale, and inhale. It's really easy to start us off, but I want you to start at this level really gently to see how easy it is to keep the pelvis level now. But when we start to work a little bit harder and challenge our balance a little more, that, that challenge increases and that's what we want to improve on. So one heel lifts, the pelvis stays completely level and doesn't dip, and the other foot stays connected with the ground. Think about the rest of our posture, lengthening through the crown of the head, through the rest of the spine, exhale and inhale. the heel that's breathing, let's get right up on the big toe on that side, make sure that big toe joint is flexing nicely, we want to have good mobility in that joint for running and walking, that's it, let's do one more, exhale, and then let's make it more dynamic, we'll lift one heel, and then as it lowers, we'll lift the other one, and swap, still keeping the pelvis really level here, Let's exhale and inhale. Exhale and inhale. Nice and easy. Exhale and inhale. Think about that balance. Think about that control. So far, so good. Nice and easy still. Keeping the pelvis dead still. Let's make it a little faster. Pelvis level still. We don't want to see the hips going from side to side, because that means then we're not keeping our pelvis level. And if you think about running and walking, if our hips are going like this, it's gonna just slow us down. Whereas we wanna go forward. We wanna go as forward as fast as we can, particularly with running. So try and keep your hips level, everything facing forward in that direction that we wanna move. Let's go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, let's keep our left leg on the ground, keep your pelvis level, and hover your right leg up into the air. Let's balance here. Again, try not to, to dip down. Let's keep the pelvis level. And if you need it, this is where you can maybe bring your chair in and just put your hand, one hand on the chair to help. Even just one finger, that we're not cheating, just one finger. Let's hold it for three, two, one. We'll drop that foot back down and let's swap one, two, three, and swap. Keep that standing leg really controlled, not allowing our pelvis to dip on either side. If you've got a little bit of a wobble of your ankles, that's fine, and that's good. We're really challenging the stability through the ankle and joints. If your mat, like mine, is a little bit thick, it's quite spongy, that's gonna make that challenge a little bit greater too, rather than just being on a flat surface um, of your floor or in your shoes. Let's hold it for three, two, one and drop. Let's keep our pelvis level and swap. One, two, three. And lift one foot off the floor again. The standing leg, let's imagine that center of gravity again is in the middle. So imagine big toe, little toe, and heel on this leg. Pelvis level. Let's hold it for a little bit longer. If you can, then we're going to raise our arms out to the side. Really challenging that control. This might even help you to balance a bit more with the hands out. And don't be afraid to hold on to something if you need to. Keeping our pelvis really level and uh, neutral. Drawing the belly button in ever so slightly if you feel you need help. If those muscles are working anyway, let's hold it for three, two, one, and drop that spot. One, two, three, foot flat on the ground. Get into that nice alignment and lift. So your core muscles are gonna work here anyway. We don't need to hold on to them or switch them on or anything, they're working anyway. You might have one side a little more wobbly than the other. You can see mine. Can you guess which one of mine is, is worse than the other? I had a bad ankle sprain a couple of years ago. Let's hold the arms out. That's it. Keep breathing with your pelagic breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Well done. And drop, let's swap, one, two, three, 
Let that standing leg balanced again, like center of gravity, pelvis level here. And let's do some movement with this other leg. We're gonna bring that foot slightly behind you and then bring it up in front. Let's bring it slightly behind and up in front. And as you're doing that, again, pelvis remains really level. And a really good one for runners to practice this one because we're always gonna have one leg touching the ground and the other leg moving then up and down at the front and back, lift and lower. If you're a runner, add in some arm work. But remember, don't cross your midline ever with your hands or your legs. So your midline is the line kind of coming from your nose through your breastbone to your belly button. So that's your midline. And think about running. We don't want to cross our midline with our arms or legs. Again, that's going to slow us down. One more. Excellent, let's swap it over. If you feel the standing leg starting to burn a little, even from the sole of the foot up to the hip, good. That's exactly um, right. Let's keep the pelvis level again. Pelvis neutral and lift. And off we go. Down and up. Keep your hands on your hips for balance. Hold on to your chair with one hand if you find these quite difficult. Definitely do them, but hold on. Exhale as you lift. Inhale as you lower. Still keeping our Pilates posture through the rest of the body, all the way through the crown of the head. That lovely length in the spine. Pelvis neutral and level. And that lovely breath. Exhale and inhale. Remember, if you're a runner, add in the arm work. Don't cross your midline with your hands or with your legs. That's it. Keep your palms facing in towards each other, your thumbs pointed to the ceiling. And again, a really good thing to try when you're running, particularly when you feel you're slowing down, you're fatiguing, maybe even on a hill, think about the posture, think about the arms helping to propel you up that hill. But not going across your body, it's going to add this rotation which is going to slow us down. We're going to think about marching up that hill, thumbs pointing to the sky. Let's go for one more. And then, well done, let's give a little shake. Keep the legs back in that neutral position. We're gonna inhale as we reach our hands overhead, breath in. And exhale, just let's do a little stretch. Down over the floor, let the head and neck just hang here. Nice stretch of the back of the legs. And exhale, we're gonna roll on up. Let's find pelvic neutral again and hold it and we're going to come and lift one leg up off the ground again even just a little bit this time so another thing we should want to be able to do if we can hold on to the chair too are some single leg heel raises so let's try and lift one heel up and drop lift and drop lift and drop if you're finding it quite challenging definitely hold the chair like that with one hand or what you could also do is try it off the mat so my mat is quite wobbly it's quite thick and spongy so it's a little more challenging so you can try that off the mat if you like as you do your single leg half raises still try and keep your pelvis as level as you can as you lift and drop lift and drop it's really challenging lift and drop let's go for one more and drop let's come down Give your legs a little shake, pelvis level and neutral, leaning off that opposite side. Have your chair behind the side if you need it, and off we go. Lift and drop. Lift and drop. Don't forget the breath. Exhale, lift. Inhale, drop. For these, there's lots of research into these kind of movements, and there's sort of a standardized number of single leg heel raises that we should be able to do depending on our age and even up to 80 years of age we should be able to do 10 single leg heel raises unaided so even in your 80s that's what we want to aim for if you're like me in your 30s between 20 and 30 reps on each side that's what we want to aim for and that's going to make you so good at running and walking and improve your core strength, hip, knee and ankle strength, particularly in standing. And drop, let's give it a little shake out. Well done, if you want to practice those again in your own time, see how many you can do on either side, maybe unaided, um, and try and build on that.
And to finish off today's session then, let's stand to the side and we'll do a nice stretch then. Have your feet hip width apart and take a step back with your right foot. Again, like all our other body movements, we want to keep the toes pointing forward, not turned in or out. Keep your heel on the ground, front knee bent, and we're leaning into that nice half stretch. Let's hold it. Pelvis level and neutral all the time, like parallel, even though they're apart. Let's just relax here for a moment. Deep breathing in through our nose, out through the mouth. Again, you can help with your balance in your chair and hold it. And then from here, with this back knee then, we're gonna bend the back knee, continuing to lean forward, continuing to keep the heel on the ground, toes pointing forward, to stretch the soleus muscle, uh, which is a little bit deeper into the calf, Sometimes can get quite tight. Let's hold it for three, two, one, and we'll swap. Bring the feet parallel. Let's take a step back. Same again, pelvis level. Let's lean forward. Have a quick glance at the back foot. Sometimes we'll see people stretch and the toes are turning out away from their midline, which is not going to give you such a good calf stretch. It might just stretch part of your calf muscle. So maybe bring the toes forward and that will get you a nicer stretch. You can turn in or out to guide different areas of the calf, but for a general calf stretch, keep the toes pointing forward. Pelvis level, relaxing through the chest, inhaling, and exhaling. And the stretch silliest then, which all runners definitely should do, let's bend that back knee. See if you can keep your heel on the ground. It's a different type of a stretch. Hold for three, two, one, and then release. And we'll just shake the legs out. Thanks for joining me today for day 15. A little bit different today. We talked a lot more throughout the session today and stopped and started a little bit. But really, really effective if, as I mentioned already, you need to work on your balance if you're getting a little bit older now. We need to make sure that we can maintain a good level um, of, of strength for those balance uh, exercises and really for function, for life. And um, it's not just to be able to do them for Pilates, it's for your everyday life. And then also for runners, really great exercises to work on your running form, technique, core strength, hip, knee, ankle stability. Um, really, really great. Uh, thanks a million. We'll see you tomorrow.